I'm tired of being monitored, you know, and corrected. And it. I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. Trump is, in my opinion, the first woman president of the United States. A woman is somebody whose boobs hang down to her knees with a prolapsed uterus from giving birth to five ungrateful little privileged <laughs> never had to work for anything in their whole damn life. <laughs> Roseanne Barr, an iconic figure in the realms of comedy and controversy, has etched a complex narrative where the echoes of laughter often intertwine with the reverberations of tumult. However, Roseanne's controversies are not all as recent as the mid-aughts, and in fact the actress has been at the center of backlash as early as the 1990s, at the height of her Roseanne sitcom popularity. In 1991, Barr gave a shocking interview with People, in which she stated that she had been a victim of incest and AB throughout her childhood. She stated that she had survived SA from her father, and psychological and physical AB from her mother. Both of Barr's parents denied these allegations, as did one of Barr's sisters, Geraldine. In a 2011 interview with Oprah Winfrey, Barr seemingly recanted these statements, claiming that they were the biggest mistake she'd ever made. Barr explained to Winfrey, I think what happened was that, well, I know what happened was that I was in a very unhappy relationship. I was prescribed numerous psychiatric substances, incredible mixtures of psychiatric substances to deal with the fact that I had and still in some ways have and always will have some mental illness. And the substances and the combination of substances that I was given, which were some strong, strong substances, I totally lost touch with reality in a big, big way. However, the most contentious incident that thrust Barr into the vortex of public scrutiny unfolded in July 2009. In a move that could only be described as audacious and ill-conceived, Barr agreed to participate in a photo shoot for Hebe magazine, a satirical Jewish publication. The feature, provocatively titled That Oven Feelin', cast Barr in the role of Adolf Hitler, complete with a Hitler mustache and a swastika armband. The audacious tableau extended to include Barr holding a tray of burnt gingerbread man cookies labeled as Burnt Jew Cookies, while the magazine's publisher, Josh Newman, contended that the shoot was conceived for satirical purposes rather than shock value, the public response was swift and unrelenting. Fox News TV host Bill O'Reilly, not one to mince words, lambasted Barr for what he perceived as mocking the Holocaust. Extras Mario Lopez delivered a more straightforward rebuke, declaring, Come on, Roseanne! Hitler jokes are never funny. The controversy, though momentarily quelled, resurfaced with renewed vigor in March 2018, as the revival of her eponymous television show thrust these incendiary photos back into the limelight. Publications such as The Forward and The Los Angeles Times revisited this controversial episode, reigniting discussions about the thin line between satire and insensitivity. Barr's proclivity for controversy extended beyond provocative photo shoots. In 2014, she found herself embroiled in a legal quagmire when the parents of George Zimmerman, infamous for the fatal shooting of Trayvon Martin, filed a lawsuit against her. The lawsuit alleged that Barr had tweeted the home address and phone number of Zimmerman's parents in 2012, with the purported intent of inciting a lynch mob to descend upon their residence. In a surprising turn, summary judgment was granted in favor of Barr in August 2015, concluding this particular legal chapter in her tumultuous career. However, Barr's propensity for provocative tweets persisted. In late March 2018, she waded into the turbulent waters of conspiracy theories surrounding David Hogg, a survivor of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida. Barr's tweet propagated a false claim that Hogg had given a salute at a March for Our Lives rally on March 24th. While the tweet was eventually deleted, it became yet another chapter in Barr's controversial online presence, prompting questions about the responsibility that accompanies a public platform. The most profound and consequential controversy unfolded on May 29, 2018, when Barr took to Twitter to respond to a thread about Valerie Jarrett, a senior advisor to former President Obama. Barr's tweet read, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equal sign, VJ. The racially charged nature of the tweet prompted widespread condemnation, with Barr eventually issuing an apology, albeit one that initially lacked genuine remorse. She defended herself by asserting that she was mocking Jarrett's politics and appearance, vehemently denying engaging in racism. The repercussions of this incident were swift and severe, 
ABC promptly canceled the revival of Roseanne and expunged all content associated with the show from its network website. In case you forgot, Roseanne was an American television sitcom that was originally broadcast on ABC from October 18, 1988 to May 20, 1997. Lauded for its realistic portrayal of the average American family, the series stars Roseanne Barr and revolves around the Connors, an Illinois working-class family. Anyway, following Barr's tweet, ABC president Channing Dungy, the first African-American woman to lead the network, characterized Barr's remark as abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values. Within three weeks, a spin-off titled The Connors emerged, essentially resurrecting the show but without Barr, who had been unceremoniously ousted. However, in recent comments on The Megyn Kelly Show, Barr blamed former co-star and executive producer Sarah Gilbert for ending the Roseanne revival. The actor elaborates on feeling betrayed by Gilbert, who plays Darlene, and says how her former on-screen daughter had begged her to come back for the revival and promised to protect her. Barr said, it was her tweet that canceled the show. And then she tweeted, it's sad when one cast member, something about racist, blah, blah. And I was floored, I was just floored. And you know, but she ends up owning my work and Tom Werner becomes her partner in owning my work. She begged me to come back saying, I've got your back. This time I won't let anyone at you. I won't let anyone hurt you. I'm gonna protect you. I know you have mental health problems, but I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna stand in the way. In any case, the Connors TV show has handled Barr's absence in the most peculiar way. The Connors began its first episode three weeks after the funeral of Roseanne Connor. It's initially believed that she might have died of a heart attack, but it's later revealed she passed away due to an opioid overdose. She kept taking pills, even after getting surgery, and it took the family a long time to get over the sense of shock. More recently, with The Connors Season 6 renewed, Dan, Roseanne's husband, has moved on with Louise. But even with that, Roseanne still gets mentioned often. There's usually a dark edge to those mentions, such as when the family jokes that Roseanne is in hell. Some critics argue that the bribed humor is right in line with the spirit of the original series, but others feel that it takes on a different context, knowing the off-camera animosity that exists. In the past, Barr has talked about being unhappy with how her character was K-ed off in The Connors, and how it was actually a message to her. She returns to the point in the same Megyn Kelly interview, saying in part, they knew I had mental health issues. I thought they wanted me to K myself. Barr's controversies weren't confined to the digital realm. In a claim that elicited incredulity and criticism, she asserted that George Soros, a billionaire investor and philanthropist, had assisted in rounding up Jews to be sent to concentration camps. George Soros is a who turned in his fellow Jews to be Emmet in German concentration camps and stole their wealth, were you aware of that? But we all make mistakes, right Chelsea? Barr wrote in the tweet. This shocking and historically inaccurate allegation was a distortion of reality, as Soros was 14 when the Nazis occupied his native Hungary. He told how he and other children were ordered by the Jewish Council to deliver deportation notices to local Jewish lawyers. His father also paid a Christian government minister to allow Soros to pose as his godson, during which time he once watched the official inventory, the estate of a Jewish man who had fled the country. The conspiracy theory that Soros was a collaborator was spread after he discussed the incident in a 1998 60 Minutes interview, saying he didn't feel any guilt over it because he was only a spectator. At the time, Soros's son Alexander defended his father in a post on the New York Daily News, saying Barr's lie was so odious. When Jews in his native Budapest were being rounded up and K-ed by the my grandfather Tibadar Soros saved many lives including his own family by securing false identity papers and helping put Jews into hiding. Among those he helped was the wife of an official of the Hungarian Ministry of Agriculture, Alexander said. In exchange, my grandfather asked the official to hide my father and pretend he was his godson. The official's duties included taking inventory of the estate of a Jewish family that had fled earlier under duress, and he took my then 13-year-old father with him. Two weeks after she accused the Jewish billionaire of being a collaborator, Barr apologized. I apologize sincerely to George Soros. His family was persecuted by the 
Auschwitz and survived the Holocaust only because of the strength and resourcefulness of his father, she said, alongside a link to Soros' Open Society Foundation. Even with her apology, this incident added another layer to Barr's controversial persona, with her statements inviting criticism and raising questions about the veracity of her claims. It underscored the complexities that arise when public figures venture into historical and sensitive topics, highlighting the importance of accuracy and responsibility in public discourse. Barr's journey through controversies took an unexpected turn in 2023 when she made a guest appearance on Theo Vaughn's podcast this past weekend. The podcast episode delved into former President Donald Trump's claims of election fraud, with Barr dismissing them as lies. However, the most egregious moment came when she seemingly denied the Holocaust, declaring, six million Jews should die right now because they cause all the problems in the world. Barr quickly clarified that her remarks were sarcastic, but the context was lost when the segment was spread on Twitter, leading to widespread condemnation. Twitter eventually added a context message to the tweet containing the edited video, emphasizing that it was a deceptively edited clip from a comedy podcast. Barr, who asserted that she had lost family members in the Holocaust, defended herself, stating that her remarks were taken out of context. The Anti-Defamation League and the Simon Wiesenthal Center weighed in on the controversy, with the latter concluding that Barr had been misrepresented. This incident highlighted the volatile nature of online discourse and the challenges of navigating sarcasm and sensitive topics in a digital landscape. The podcast episode, marred by accusations of spreading hate speech, was eventually removed from YouTube, adding another chapter to the long list of controversies that have defined Roseanne Barr's tumultuous career. Anyway, besides being a controversial figure in Hollywood, Roseanne Barr, like many other celebrities, had a tumultuous childhood. Born in Salt Lake City, Utah, into a Jewish family, Roseanne is the eldest of four children to Helen and Jerome Herschel Barr. Her early years were shaped by the unique dynamics of her religious upbringing. Barr's family history was rich with Jewish emigrants, her father's family from the Russian Empire, and her maternal grandparents from Austria-Hungary and Lithuania. The legacy of the Holocaust cast a somber shadow on her family, as her great-grandparents fell victim to its atrocities. The interplay of Barr's Jewish and Mormon heritage added a layer of complexity to her early life. Raised in a devoutly Orthodox Jewish household, her maternal grandmother exerted a profound influence on her religious upbringing. However, her parents, perhaps to assimilate into their community, kept their Jewish heritage a secret from their neighbors while being partially involved in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Barr humorously reflected on this duality, stating, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning I was a Jew. Sunday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, and Wednesday afternoon we were Mormons. Her childhood took an unexpected turn when, at the tender age of three, Barr experienced Bell's palsy on the left side of her face. In a desperate search for a cure, her mother sought the help of a rabbi, only to find no resolution. Miraculously, a Mormon preacher's prayer was followed by her sudden recovery. This early encounter with faith and healing would leave an indelible mark on Barr's perspective. Barr has also revealed that she is on the autism spectrum, providing insight into the unique lens through which she views the world. At the age of six, she discovered her first public stage, lecturing at LDS churches around Utah and taking on leadership roles in a Mormon youth group. However, tragedy struck at 16 when she was hit by a car, resulting in a traumatic brain injury that dramatically altered her behavior. This incident led to her institutionalization for eight months at Utah State Hospital, marking a challenging period in her adolescence. In 1970, at the age of 18, Barr embarked on a journey of independence, informing her parents that she was visiting a friend in Colorado for two weeks. She never returned, signaling the beginning of her exploration into the unknown realms of adulthood. The subsequent years were marked by the birth of a child, whom she chose to put up for adoption. The complexities of motherhood and separation would later become a poignant chapter in Barr's life. Barr's entry into the world of entertainment began in Colorado, where she engaged in stand-up gigs in clubs across Denver and other towns. Her comedic talent caught the attention of industry insiders, leading to an opportunity to perform at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles. In 1985, she made a memorable appearance on The Tonight Show, setting the stage for her rise in the comedy scene. The turning point came in 1986 when she performed on a Rodney Dangerfield special and on Late Night with David Letterman. Her comedic prowess earned her an HBO special, titled The Roseanne Barr Show, in 1987. This achievement marked the beginning of a series of milestones in Barr's career. 
During this period, she popularized the phrase domestic goddess in her routines, referencing the traditional role of a homemaker or housewife. Her act resonated with audiences, leading to the development of her own series on ABC, aptly named Roseanne. Roseanne, a groundbreaking sitcom that ran from 1988 to 1997, catapulted Barr to the forefront of the entertainment industry. The show created by Matt Williams centered around the Connor family and addressed issues faced by working-class Americans. Its debut in 1988 was a resounding success, watched by 21.4 million households and making it the highest-rated debut of the season. However, the success of Roseanne was not without its share of challenges. Barr, who played the lead character Roseanne Connor, clashed with Matt Williams over creative control during the first season. This power struggle led to Williams' departure, with Barr seeking more autonomy over the show's direction. Despite the conflicts, Roseanne continued for nine seasons, earning Barr an Emmy, a Golden Globe, a Kids Choice Award, and three American Comedy Awards for her exceptional contribution to the show. Barr's portrayal of a fierce working-class domestic goddess became iconic, challenging stereotypes and providing a representation of a strong mother figure not victimized by patriarchal consumerism. For the final two seasons of Roseanne, Barr's earnings reached $40 million, solidifying her position as the second highest paid woman in show business at the time, trailing only behind Oprah Winfrey. Notably, Barr's creative influence extended beyond acting, as she gave early writing opportunities to notable figures in the industry, such as Amy Sherman Palladino and Joss Whedon. Her commitment to empowering new voices in entertainment showcased her dedication to shaping the narrative and fostering talent within the industry. Industry. Despite her tremendous success, Barr found herself at the center of controversy on July 25, 1990, when she performed a unique rendition of The Star-Spangled Banner before a baseball game between the San Diego Padres and Cincinnati Reds. Her off-key singing, followed by actions mimicking baseball players, drew criticism, including from President George H.W. Bush, who called her rendition disgraceful. Barbara Ehrenreich, a prominent commentator, described Barr as a working-class spokesperson, representing the often overlooked segments of society. Her portrayal of the polyester-clad, overweight occupants of the slow track resonated with audiences, challenging societal norms and contributing to a broader conversation about class and representation. During the final season of Roseanne, negotiations were underway for a spin-off that would continue Barr's role as Roseanne Connor. However, discussions with network executives proved fruitless, leading to the conclusion of Barr's involvement in the project. In 1989, she released her autobiography, Roseanne, My Life as a Woman, providing readers with a deeper understanding of her life, career, and the challenges she faced. In 1989, Barr made her film debut in She Devil, playing the role of Ruth, a scorned housewife. Film critic Roger Ebert praised Barr's performance, noting her ability to delve into complex human emotions beyond the confines of her TV persona. The same year, she voiced the character of Julie in Look Who's Talking To, earning a nomination for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Supporting Actress. Barr's versatility extended to the realm of live television, as she appeared three times on Saturday Night Live from 1991 to 1994. In 1994, she hosted the MTV Video Music Awards, becoming the first female comedian to do so. Her impact on the industry was further evident when she portrayed the Wicked Witch of the West in a production of The Wizard of Oz at Madison Square Garden in 1998. The late 90s marked another significant chapter in Barr's career when she hosted her own talk show, The Roseanne Show. Running for two years before its cancellation in 2000, the show showcased Barr's ability to engage with diverse topics and guests, further solidifying her presence in the talk show arena. The summer of 2003 saw Barr undertaking a dual role, hosting a cooking show titled Domestic Goddess and starring in a reality show called The Real Roseanne Show, centered around the behind-the-scenes dynamics of hosting a cooking show. Unfortunately, both projects faced an untimely end due to a hysterectomy. In 2004, Barr voiced the character Maggie in the animated film Home on the Range, showcasing her continued commitment to exploring diverse roles in the entertainment industry. After a hiatus from stand-up comedy, Barr made a triumphant return in 2005 with a world tour. The following year, she performed live dates in Europe as part of the Leicester Comedy Festival in England. Her first children's DVD, Rockin' with Roseanne, Calling All Kids, was released in the same month. 
The culmination of Barr's return to the stage came with an HBO comedy special, Roseanne Barr, Blonde NBY, which aired in November 2006. Two nights earlier, Barr made a noteworthy return to primetime network TV with a guest spot on NBC's My Name is Earl, portraying a quirky trailer park manager. In April 2007, Barr took on the role of hosting season three of The Search for the Funniest Mom in America on Nick at Night. Her ability to engage with a diverse range of projects highlighted her versatility and adaptability within the entertainment industry. March 2008 witnessed Barr headlining an act at the Sahara Hotel and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip, showcasing her enduring appeal to live audiences. The years from 2009 to 2010 saw Barr venturing into the realm of radio, hosting a politically themed radio show on KPFK. Alongside her partner Johnny Argent, Barr also began hosting a weekly radio show on Sundays on KCAA in the Los Angeles area, titled The Roseanne and Johnny Show. This move into radio demonstrated her ongoing commitment to engaging with audiences through various mediums. Barr's presence continued to resonate across different platforms as she made appearances on Bravo's second annual A-List Awards in 2009. In February 2010, she headlined the inaugural Traverse City Comedy Arts Festival, a project of the Traverse City Film Festival founded by filmmaker Michael Moore. This foray into comedy festivals underscored Barr's ability to connect with audiences in diverse settings. The documentary landscape also captured Barr's involvement with her appearance in Jordan Brady's 2010 documentary about stand-up comedy, I Am Comic. This marked yet another dimension of her contribution to the exploration and understanding of the comedic craft. Barr's evolution extended to the realm of literature as she released her third book, Roseanne Archie, Dispatches from the Nut Farm in January 2011. This collection of dispatches provided readers with insights into Barr's thoughts, experiences, and perspectives, offering a deeper look into her creative mind. Her influence transcended traditional mediums, as evidenced by her appearance in a Super Bowl XLV commercial for Snickers in 2011, alongside comedian Richard Lewis. The commercial's popularity based on TVO users rewinding and watching it repeatedly underscored Barr's enduring appeal to a broad audience. July 13, 2011, marked the premiere of Roseanne's Nuts, a reality show featuring Barr, boyfriend Johnny Argent, and son Jake as they ran a macadamia nut and livestock farm in Big Island, Hawaii. While the show offered a glimpse into Barr's unconventional lifestyle, it faced cancellation in September of the same year. In August 2011, news circulated about Barr working on a new sitcom titled Downwardly Mobile with 20th Century Fox Television. Co-created, written, and executive produced by Eric Gilliland, the show reflected Barr's progressive politics. Although NBC initially picked up the show, it was later dropped, with Barr attributing its rejection to being labeled too polarizing by network executives. In August 2012, Comedy Central roasted Barr, a tradition in the entertainment industry that involves humorous tributes and jests by fellow comedians. Notably, Barr's former spouse, Tom Arnold, participated in the roast, contributing to the humorous yet reflective atmosphere of the event. The summer of 2014 brought Barr to the judging panel of Last Comic Standing on NBC, alongside Keenan Ivory Wyans and Russell Peters. Her involvement in the show highlighted her ongoing commitment to supporting emerging comedic talent. November 28, 2014 marked the debut of Momsters, When Moms Go Bad, a series hosted by Barr on the Investigation Discovery Cable Network. In this true crime series, Barr brought her unique perspective to the exploration of extreme maternal behavior, showcasing her versatility in navigating diverse genres. March 27, 2018 saw the revival of Roseanne, the iconic sitcom that catapulted Barr to fame. The original cast returned for the 10th season, premiering on ABC to high ratings. The success prompted ABC to renew the series for an 11th season with 13 episodes on March 30, 2018. However, the triumph was short-lived, as on May 29, 2018, ABC canceled the series in the aftermath of a tweet by Barr widely considered to be racist. The controversy surrounding the tweet led to a complex negotiation between Barr and Tom Werner regarding her producer's stake in a spin-off titled The Connors, ordered by ABC for the fall season. The resolution of the negotiations marked the end of Barr's association with the spin-off. In September 2022, it was announced that Barr would be featured in a new comedy special titled Cancel This. 
The special was released on the streaming service Fox Nation on February 13, 2023. This marked another chapter in Barr's comedic journey, showcasing her ability to adapt to changing mediums and continue captivating audiences. The trajectory of Barr's career took another exciting turn on November 30, 2023, with the announcement of her starring role in an adult animated comedy series for The Daily Wire titled Mr. Burcham. Scheduled to debut in early 2024, the project signifies Barr's ongoing exploration of new avenues within the entertainment industry. In any case, as she navigates the turbulent waters of public opinion, Barr continues to be a polarizing figure, leaving an indelible mark on the intersection of comedy, celebrity, and controversy. Her journey serves as a complex tapestry woven with threads of humor, provocation, and the enduring question of how far the boundaries of free speech extend in the realm of celebrity. Through it all, Roseanne Barr remains an enigmatic force, challenging societal norms and sparking debates that resonate far beyond the world of entertainment. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.